All right, so let's do something useful with all that software we just installed. What we're going to do is get some real movie ratings data and use Spark to analyze it and produce a histogram, if you will, of the distribution of movie ratings. So how many people rate movies? Five stars versus three stars versus one stars. We'll do that right now. But to do that, first we need some code and we need some data. So let's get the data first. You need a place to put it. So the first thing we have to do is create a folder on your hard drive that you're gonna use for all of the course content for this course. So I'm gonna go to my C drive here and right click and uh, go to new folder and we'll call it Spark Scala. Okay, so this is gonna be the folder where I'm keeping all the resources for this course, all the code, all the projects, all the data. It's kind of like where we're gonna put everything in the end. So remember where that is. We'll keep that off to the side. Now let's get some data to put in there. So open up your favorite web browser and go to grouplens.org, just like that. So pause if you need to for a second to go do that. Once you're at grouplens.org, that will take you to the University of Minnesota's research site. And these guys are kind of pioneers in the field of movie recommendations, and they've made a lot of movie rating data freely available for people like us to play around with. So click on the data sets tab. And what we're going to do is grab the movie lens 100K data set. So this is uh, kind of small data, 100,000 ratings, but since we're going to be developing initially in our desktop instead of on a real cluster, we're going to just use a smaller subset of this ratings data to play around with and get familiar with what we're doing. And that's actually generally a good thing to do. You know, you want to test out your, your Spark Scala programs on a smaller data set locally and debug it and then work your way up to larger data sets. It's generally a good practice. So let's click on the ml-100k.zip file here, let it come down, and that contains all the ratings data we need. If I show that in folder, I can right click on that and extract all to decompress it. And there we have it. Take a quick peek inside, you can see there's a bunch of files in there. U.data contains the actual movie rating data. It has 100,000 rows of user IDs, movie IDs, ratings, and timestamps, and all this other stuff is things like uh, u.item, which maps things like movie IDs to movie titles and stuff like that. But for now, let's just copy that entire ML-100K folder. Okay, remember this is the decompressed one that contains these files. And copy it into our Spark Scala folder that we created a minute ago. Okay, so that's the start of our little course folder there. Next thing we need is some code to actually run. So. I'll have a link for this associated in the, the lecture resources, but if it's not there for some reason, here's where you want to go. HTTP colon backslash media dot sundog dash soft dot com slash spark scala slash spark scala dot zip. Okay. Again, pause there if you need to, but I'm just going to go ahead and download that. All right. So let's go ahead and open that up. And you'll see we have sparkscala.zip. Let's decompress that. Extract all, extract. And this is kind of where we're going to be copying stuff out of. So, you know, we're actually going to be importing stuff out of this folder and into that Spark Scala folder that we created. So, keep this somewhere safe. Um, you know, for me, it's just going to stay in my downloads folder for now under the Spark Scala folder that I decompressed. If you want to tuck that away somewhere else, you can, but, you know, just make sure you remember where you put all this stuff because this is all the source and data that you need for the course. And we're going to use it one bit at a time. So next, let's actually try to run that code, shall we? So let's go ahead and open up the Scala IDE that we installed in lesson one. So for me, I put a handy dandy shortcut on my desktop here to eclipse.exe. Gonna open that up and make sure you select the right workspace folder. So remember that folder we just made? We're gonna hit the browse button here to select a workspace and set that to, in my case, C Spark Scala, which is that folder we created that's gonna have all the stuff for this course, okay? So that's going to where, be where all the projects live. Hit OK. And up should come a blank Scala IDE screen. Let's blow that up. All right, first thing we need to do is create a project that we're going to use for this course. So let's go to File, New, Scala Project. And we'll call it, I don't know, uh, Spark Scala Course. How about that? Finish. All right. Hit pause if you need to, to keep up with me here. Very important that you follow these steps exactly that I'm about to do, okay? All right, now that that project's been created, I can right click on it and say new package. And it says Java package, but it is going to contain Scala code. Don't get thrown off by that. And we need a package name. 
for the package we're going to keep all of our code in for this course. Now I'm going to go with com.sundogsoftware.spark. And if you've done Java coding before, you kind of know the naming conventions for packages. But if you're not familiar with it, what you usually do is you use your organization's URL, domain name, as sort of the basis for it. So I have a website called sundogsoftware.com. So just to make sure that my code doesn't conflict with someone else's code in a different package, I'm going to use that as my unique identifier for my package name. So I start off with com.sundogsoftware, which identifies my organization. And Spark is kind of the name that I'm giving for this particular project. Hit finish. So now we need to import the source code for this project and we're going to right click on this and go to import. So I right clicked on the package. I'm saying import. We're going to go to general and then file system. That means we're going to import source code from my local file system. So remember we downloaded everything for this course. We're just going to import it from there. So I'm going to browse to my download directory. And under there, I had a Spark Scala folder, which is where I downloaded all the stuff for this course, remember? So I'm going to select that Spark Scala folder in my downloads. And you should see something like this, a little menu here of all the resources for this course that we downloaded from the web. So let's go down to ratingscounter.scala and check that off. And we're going to hit Finish. And that should give us, underneath our package, a ratingscounter.scala file. So go ahead and double click on that, and you can take a little peek at the code here. And you can see here's some actual Scala Spark code that we're going to run in a minute. So the nice thing about the Scala IDE is that it tells you very clearly when there's a problem before you even run your code. So all these little red X's, that means something's wrong. You can't even compile this, let alone run it. And these X's over here also indicate a problem with the package itself. And if you were to actually go down here to the Problems tab, you could get more information on it. Now, in our case, the only issue is that we haven't actually imported all the Spark libraries to our project yet, so all this Spark code has nothing to really link against or nothing to refer to. But that's easy to fix. So all you need to do is click on the project here, Spark Scala Course, and then right-click it and click on Properties. Now I want you to click on Java Build Path. And what we're going to do is go to Libraries and add, add External Jars. What we're going to do is add in all the jars for Spark itself. So to do that, we're going to navigate to where we installed Spark, which should be C Spark on a Windows system, if you follow my instructions earlier in the course. And we'll go to the Jars folder here. And basically, we're just going to Control A to select everything and import it into our project. Why not? And hit OK. And if you give it a few seconds, those errors should clear up. Sure enough, they do. Very cool. All right, so now we can actually run this puppy. All right, to do that, we're going to go to the Run menu and say Run Configurations. All right, and we're going to create a Scala application. So let's double click on that. Give it a name. We'll call it Ratings Counter. And for the main class, we're going to type in the package name, which is com.sundogsoftware.spark followed by the name of the object that we're creating, which is ratings counter. All right, and now for Lucky, it will actually work. Let's give it a try. All right, off it goes. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> cool, so we actually ran some actual Spark code there and it worked. So what's going on here? Well, our output here is actually telling you that for rating type one, there are 6,110 one-star ratings in our data set. 11,372 stars, and so on and so forth. So that's giving you the breakdown of different rating types in that real movie rating data. It's pretty cool, and it happened pretty quickly, too. So how do we interpret this? It's kind of interesting, right? I mean, the most popular movie rating is a 4, and people really reserved 1-star ratings for the worst of the worst. 5-star uh, is not that popular compared to, like, a 3-star. So, you know, people are fairly critical about their movies in this data set. Now again, this goes back to 1998. It might be interesting to actually download the uh, latest movie ratings data from MovieLens and see if that distribution has changed. If you want a little bit of a challenge, you might want to go ahead and try that, but it will involve changing this code a little bit. So there you have it. You've actually run some real Spark code using Scala. Woohoo! Congratulations, your first Scala Spark program. Now we're going to go into in more detail of how this actually works and what's going on here, but if you do want to peek at the code, don't let me stop you. Uh, take a look. So it's not that hard to figure it out, right? So 
we have an object that we're kind of creating our application within. We're going to name it ratings counter. And we have a main function that is in everything that we run. And here's where all the action hit happens. So first thing we do is we get rid of some of the log spam. We just say that we only want to see error level messages. And once that line gets executed, all these info messages start getting suppressed. Good thing. Next thing we do is we just set up our Spark context. And what this means is that we're going to run it locally using every core of our CPU that's available. And we're going to name this job ratings counter. Now, with one line of code, we actually load up the actual ratings data itself into something we call a resilient distributed data store that we'll talk about more in a couple of lectures. So that kind of loads up our raw data. This next line actually parses that data out. So it splits it out based on tab characters and extracts the actual ratings themselves. Okay, so since all we're doing is counting up rating scores, we're just extracting the actual rating from each line here. And then we have this magic little function called count by value that will automatically give us a count by each rating score. And then we sort it and we print the results. So, you know, it doesn't look that intimidating, does it? I mean, that's just some basic Scala code in Spark. And we're going to go next into understanding Scala. So let's go into some more depth about what's going on with Scala itself and giving you a crash course in the Scala language. Once we're done with that, we'll come back to Spark and see how it all fits together with Spark and Scala. So again, congratulations. Got your very first Spark application with the Scala programming language actually running on your desktop. Congratulations. Let's go learn more about Scala. All right, we've done a lot in these past two lectures. We set everything up for developing Spark code on your desktop using Scala, and we actually ran some Spark code using some real movie ratings data. And you know what? You could take that same code and run it on a real cluster, and it would just automatically distribute it as if by magic across the entire cluster. So you've actually made a lot of progress so far Pat yourself on the back. It's awesome. All right, now we have gone through a lot of steps to get to this point. So if things aren't working as expected, go back and rewatch things. All it takes is one misstep, one little mistype thing, and nothing will work. So if you're having trouble, please go back. Just watch it again. Take it slow, one step at a time. Use the pause button on the video if you need to, to kind of go slowly one step by one step. Hopefully you'll get there. Now at this point in the course, you might be prompted for a review of this course already. And kind of the way it works is they want to like collect your feedback on the course as you go through it. And you know, if, you're, if you like what you hear so far, if you enjoyed my teaching style and you're feeling productive, awesome, please leave a rating. If you don't feel like you're ready to leave one yet though, and you kind of want to keep on going and see how it goes, there is a Ask Me Later button on there you can hit as well. So don't be afraid to use that too. And if you are having trouble, go ahead and fire me an email, you know, uh, use the messaging feature on this platform or post a question in the Q&A for this course, and I'll be glad to help you out and try to get you going, okay? All right, so with that, let's move on, and we're gonna do our crash course in the Scala programming language next. Big stuff.